A lot of people tell me, Naomi, you're crazy for flying. I was like, well, if you know where you're going when you're dying and you just don't care. So I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. Hi, I'm Naomi. I was born and raised in Waco, Texas. Life is better with him. <laughs> I can't stop talking about Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was a very worldly woman and very worthless. I carried a lot of labels, shame, guilt, unforgiveness. But when I found Jesus, my labels changed. And I'll keep riding until he comes. <laughs> were from Romania, and they fled communism. There was a, a, a revolt that was, I believe my dad believed that there was about to be a revolt. And um, so he wanted to get out of Romania. And at the same time, I think my mom wanted to start a new and better life for us. Um, so they decided to escape Romania together. And my mom was pregnant with me, and she left four of my brothers and sisters in Romania. They escaped Romania, and they made it into Yugoslavia. And that's where they got captured and imprisoned. They had some friends in Texas that were going to a church, and they helped, the church helped sponsor my parents to come to America. And that's how I was born in Waco, Texas. My mom had 15 children, so the fifth oldest of 15 children. My dad worked. He was the only one that worked. Um, my mom raised the children, and we grew up in a very religious home. So we had to wear dresses and scarves. We couldn't wear makeup, earrings, or any of that, or you would go to hell. So I grew up to <laughs> I went to a very strict church in, uh, in Waco, Texas, a small Romanian community there. So we everything we did, we couldn't play sports because it was a sin. We loved playing soccer. We even loved playing board games. If we played board games, my mom would get mad at us and totally destroy our game setup. My dad, he was very, because he, he's from a military background, so he was very serious. If we dropped something in the house, we'd get hit for being clumsy. If we, we did something to provoke his anger, he would pick whatever's next to him to hit, hit us with. If it was a car part, if it was a screwdriver or a lawn chair, whatever it was <laughs> next to him, you know, uh, is a very rough uh, childhood growing up. some childhood friends that I grew up with um, and I stayed the night at their house one one night and his wife worked night shift and I was 10 years old at the time and one night at 2 in the morning he came into the room pulled me out of the bed took me into the living room put his hand around my mouth and just started raping <laughs> I woke my friend up and I said, I'm scared, I wanna go home. And I was crying and uh, she got me to a telephone and I called my dad and my dad came to pick me up and he asked me, you know, what's wrong or whatever. And I was just too scared to even tell him uh, what happened that day. But I remember my heart changed. It became really hard. It just felt like uh, my innocence was taken away at a young age. Again, at 12 years old, my mom was hanging out with some of her friends. They were inside praying, 
and I was outside in the backyard playing on the swing set, and her husband had a shop right next to the swing set, and he said, hey, come here, I wanna show you something. So he brought me into the garage, he tied me to a chair, and uh, turned on pornography and started playing with me. After he was done, he gave me some candy and he said, don't tell anybody. When I told my mom that day what happened, she called him over along with his wife and confronted them on this situation. And uh, I don't remember him going to prison for what he, for what he did, but when they left, my mom said, you know, this shouldn't get out. We shouldn't tell anybody about this. So it just got sh swept under the rug and uh, my heart just became even more hard. I dropped out of school, high school. My freshman year, I dropped out and I started drinking and doing drugs. And when that happened to me, I, I lived a life of worthlessness. I felt like I had no worth. At age 16, at a party, I met, I met and fell in love with the first guy I met at a party. And we started drinking, doing drugs. We actually, at the age of 17, I got married to him to get out of my parents' house. And uh, I caught him watching pornography and I got mad because it was something that plagued my whole life. And I got mad and I, vengeance is mine. I thought the worldly way. So I went out and slept with somebody else. I committed adultery. I filed for divorce. And uh, from there, it was just a downward spiral kept drinking and doing drugs, smoking pot, and uh, just living a really fast life. Well, I knew hell was my destination. You know, there's no hope for me. And I thought about taking my life, commit suicide. But when I sat there, I remember praying. I said, God, if there's a God of love and mercy, please show me because I don't know of one. And so I never brought myself to taking my life that night. And then uh, two years later, I meet uh, my current husband, Joel Lightfoot. I flew to Romania to visit family and he actually flew to Romania. And I was like, wow, this guy really, really cares about me. He flew across the world to, to follow me there. That day when he came, he asked me a question. He said, Naomi, if you died today, where would you go? And I said, hell, for sure. I know where I'm going, <laughs> hell. And he said, would you like to know the truth? And I was like, sure, if there is any out there. Uh, and he told me about Jesus coming down to the earth and dying on the cross for my sins. And he said, all you have to do is believe in what Jesus did on the cross for you and you'll be saved. You'll have a new beginning, a new start. You'll be clean, you know? And I was like, man, I've been wanting that for, for a long time. You mean I just have to place my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what you did for me? That, okay, you know what? What do I have to lose? You know, so it was not like, you know, purple smoke or, you know, something weird's gonna happen, but uh, it, he came into my heart that day. And then from there on, he was working in me. You know, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he leaves you with the Holy Spirit. I can say my first two years after giving my life to Christ, um, it was the, it wasn't perfect. I mean, me and Joel actually, we got a house together and we were still living in sin and we're still partying and drinking. He wanted to point me to the cross. He wanted me to go to heaven with him when I, when I died, but he wanted to keep on 
doing, you know, partying and drinking, doing his thing. And I was like, man, this sounds, I'm gonna follow Jesus, you know? But anyway, it was a work in progress for sure. Um, a lady, I used to take care of elderly people and her daughter told me about BSF, Bible Study Fellowship. And they were studying the book of Matthew at the time. And they said, Naomi, you gotta come check it out. A group of ladies are meeting. Uh, you ought to come and check it out. And I was like, sure, yeah, I would love to. Because at that time I was looking for change. And so I met with the ladies and we started reading the book of Matthew each week. And that's where the word just came in and started doing the work. When you're reading it, He is doing the changing. So, and that's where I found Jesus even more. I started to learn more. The knowledge of Him, having the knowledge, is even more amazing because now you know more about God. I kept on doing that, and then I had another friend. She told me about uh, prison ministry. She said, hey, Naomi, you ought to come to prison with me. You know, we could ride our motorcycles in. At the time, I had a motorcycle, and I wasn't using it for the right things. And and she was like, you ought to bring your, your motorcycle into prison. I was like, what? You can bring your motorcycle? <laughs> sure. Before that, she gave me a book, which is Carla Faye Tucker, Set Free, pretty amazing book. Uh, she was the first woman in the state of Texas on, on death row. She, she lost her life on death row, but she killed two people with a pickaxe. But her story, just reading her book, really changed my life. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to do this. So me and my friend Chrissy rode our bikes into prison. just started sharing with other girls about what Jesus has been doing in my life and how He can change them. Because a lot of the women in prison, they just feel like that's it. This is it, you know? And it's not it. There is more and, and God can restore everything that the locust has eaten. And uh, anyway, so I did that. Started doing Bill Glass behind the walls, prison ministry, that's who they are. That I rode the motorcycle in with and uh, I started doing Bridges to Life as well. It's more of a discipleship based. You're spending more time with the inmates and uh, we, one of the chapters in Bridges to Life, it's forgiveness. And that was one huge part that helped me as well, forgive the people that have raped me. Uh, forgiveness is freeing. It frees you of bitterness. While I was doing Bridges to Life, the forgiveness chapter, they require us to write a letter. And so I wrote a letter to my father asking for forgiveness because I was the prodigal daughter that left home. And I asked him for forgiveness and uh, he forgave me. And I remember him crying. It was the first time I ever saw emotion in my dad. Uh, and I felt like there was a bridge built there. Um, my father died four years ago from cancer. And so I felt like, you know, I don't have my dad for very long. And that's why I wrote the letter to him asking for forgiveness and built that bridge with my father. The Holy Spirit started convicting me really hard. It's like, Naomi, you know you shouldn't be doing this. You know, the Holy Spirit, the conscience always telling you, you shouldn't be doing this. And I kept doing it. And uh, we were having sex out of wedlock and drinking and drugging. And anyway, one day I just felt God really speaking to me and saying, you need to move out. And I was like, that's crazy. I was like, okay, you know what? I'll move out. And God brought a friend to my mind that lived in these certain apartment complexes, and I called her and I said, hey, I want to move into those apartment complexes. How much is an apartment there? And she was like, well, since you're asking, why don't you come and take, take over my lease? All you have to do is pay $200 a month. And I was like, 
wow, okay, I'm in. And so I called Joel and I said, hey, I feel like God has convicted me and he's telling me I need to move out. And he was really quiet on the phone. <laughs> uh, I was like, I need you to help me move my things. And so he helped me move out. And uh, I kept studying God's Word and God's Word kept convicting me. And uh, I just started doing prison ministry and I just fell in love with, with Jesus. Like He became my first love. I was worshiping Joel for so long that he took the first place of God. And I replaced Joel with Jesus. He became my first love. And I just started chasing him. And Joel just watched that. He was like, whoa, she didn't. He, I, he, I totally ceased having sex with him, drinking and doing drugs. I was done with it. I found something better. And uh, I was just chasing him. And I even started praying the prayer. I said, God, if Joel is for me, you make it. If Joel is not for me, you break this because I cannot, I mean, this is, I was in bondage. And I kept praying that and doing prison ministry and I kept inviting him in to do prison ministry. I said, Joel, you can bring your bike in. And uh, he, sa he said, no. <laughs> and I kept begging him to come. And finally he said yes. And he brought his bike in to prison and it was life changing for him. He never said no after that. He started going into prison and uh, one night we had a, a prison event where all the volunteers came. There were like 600 volunteers. And that day was when Joel got up on stage with Bill Glass. He's a football player, a retired football player. And um, he asked me to come up there. Now we come up here. And I went up to, on stage and Joel got on one knee and presented a ring and said, will you marry me? And I was like, what? I hope you don't mind if I say that I love you Cause there's so many ways that I want to Carve out our names, board a last minute plane, just us two We can chase And so in my heart, that's where my heading was, and he keeps me grounded, and you know, I always have my, I want to do everything, and and I do, I overbook myself a lot, because I love people, and I'm hosting or doing something, or uh, hospitality is one of my strengths, so I love hosting. I ride motorcycles for Jesus. We go into prisons, we go, Wherever we go to the rallies, anywhere where it's crazy, where we can shine the light, share the light of Jesus. Uh, now I'm flying. I'm trying to learn how to fly an airplane. Uh, a lot of people tell me, Naomi, you're crazy for flying. I was like, well, if you know where you're going when you're die when you die, then you just don't care. So I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. Now I'm like just seeking a lot of thrills. Uh, so that's why I'm flying as well. Uh, I love to fly airplanes. Um, so for my victimization, when I was raped, I used to really hate people. I didn't really, I was using people and I was an abuser. Now I just love people. People say, Naomi, you talk to anybody. I was like, yeah, because I love them. I love people. And wherever Jesus tells me to go, I'll go the woman that was caught in many sin. And he said, uh, she was the one that wept at his feet and used her hair to wipe his feet. And she realized that she found her one true love. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more is what he told her. And it's the same with me. Like, I felt like I was the woman and sin, the one of, a woman of many sins. I'm just gonna keep following Jesus and staying focused on Him, 
no matter what may come, I'm stay focused. I have his word and I'll keep riding until he comes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like I just go along and I'll share my story with whoever, even when I'm in the gym working out. If there's a girl next to me, I'm gonna share my story with her. I feel sorry for her because she sat next to me, but in the end, I just bring them along. I just wanna show everybody what Jesus has done for me and that he can do the same thing for them. My goal in life is just to, just to follow him. There's nothing else, nothing else out there. I mean, everything else that I do is, it's fun, like flying an airplane or riding a motorcycle. Those are fun things. They're ha you only get happiness for, temporary happiness from that, but the ultimate Joy is being in His Word. That's where the ultimate joy, everlasting. Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.